Hello, this is Julia Bell, and today I'm going to talk about your computer concepts assignments. And I'm going to share my screen with you. I've went ahead and opened up my IT lab, and I'm going to show you the computer concepts module. Here's computer concepts module, and again, I'm logged in as a student. The read objectives are here. I also put the read assignment down in do. Uh, there's not a lot in watch that I care for you to watch right now, so go mainly to the do assignments. First thing I want you to do is to look at this one, INFS Concepts Bell. If you'll go ahead and open that up. Great. This opens up in OneNote. This is a OneNote notebook that I've created for you. The first thing you do is I want you to watch these two videos. They're unedited, so they're a little crude, so my apologies. The first one talks about different types of computers. The second one talks about storage and memory. And I'm going to put a couple here more in the next few days. The next thing I want you to look at is this one, Brief History. Click over here. You've got two options. Here's the document in Word format. You can download this one and read it at your leisure. Or you can go through the pages online. And I'll make this bigger so you can see. This is some content I wrote this summer. The first one, this is an index of all the pages. tells you what's on each page. Uh, the second, the next item we go to is page two. That is, again, continuing all the pages. I pretty much indexed everything. The fourth one is actually a list of all the pictures and the figures and where I got those from. The content begins on this one. Here talk about layers of a computing system and what those different layers are. From communication to an application like Word or Excel, or maybe Adobe Acrobat, or maybe you're using a, uh, something like Photoshop to work on photos. That's got to write on an operating system. Someone had to do some programming at some point to make those all talk together. Another person had to configure the hardware. And at the end, we have information. Could be a picture, could be a report, lots of different options. So you kind of work your way from the outside in. So if you can't communicate, in the end, you'll have no information. Here's some of the components. What is information? What is hardware? Programming, operating systems, applications, and communications. Be sure to read these parts because there will be a quiz. I think there's a five-question quiz that you'll need to take. Here's the next page. It talks about a brief history of the hardware. Man, look at these things. Uh, 51 to 1959. I know. Most of us weren't even born then. It's okay. Uh, they generate a lot of heat. They're big. Not real reliable, but pretty fabulous. This guy, a magnetic uh, drum for the memory so it could just remember a little bit what's it's turned on. This thing was huge. The size of uh, three of the long tables in our classrooms and pretty wide. It's a big old thing. To where now we've got this tiny little chip inside your laptop. Some earlier pictures. I won't read all this to you, but I'm going to trust that you will go through and look at it and maybe make yourself a few notes. Very important lady to remember, Ada Lovelace. At age eight, no, I'm not kidding you, she actually realized and had an interest in mechanical devices. She saw Babbage's adding machine, and she became the first programmer. That's pretty fabulous. Uh, magnetic disk, this is a disk that we have on the desk in our classroom in 62. It's a very, very old magnetic disk. Here is a picture of some of the history of transistors going from something very large to very small. They're even smaller now, the things that we use. But again, I'm not going to read all this to you, give you some time. I'll allow you to read that. Here is actually on the left another tab. If you are a Mac user, you'll find some of these hints very, very helpful to make your Mac work its best. Macs are made by the Apple Corporation. They're not meant to run Windows. They have the Mac operating system. Hot trends. I want to look at some of these real quickly. How do you find low or free online training. I have given you a bunch of resources. Khan is free, Code is free, Code Academy is free, edX is free, 
Microsoft Virtual Academy is free. I take a lot of courses through Udemy. $10 as of next month, I found out they're going up to $15. It's still a great deal. And you have those courses forever. Some courses you sign up for through some institutions go away quickly. Uh, edX, I've taken one from Harvard. Fabulous course. Price, nothing. Some links that I'll talk about later on buying a computer. Places to buy and some how-to sites. My favorite, ifixit.com. Everything from your Razer to your Macintosh laptop. Pretty cool. But the things you need to focus on for your first two assignments is the introduction page and the brief history page. I'm going to close this out. Here's the brief history. Let me open that. This is a quiz. Keep in mind, I am going to get three attempts. Uh, there are five questions. When I start this quiz, here's what happens. First question is, is multiple choice. The fifth one is a matching question. Advance to the next question after you answer it. When you're done, submit for grading. I'm not going to submit because I've already taken this test as a teacher, so no biggie. This is the next item you need to complete, the INFS Concepts Introduction. Watch those videos on that first page. Write me some notes. Send them in. Here's the document name. I want you to name it. Choose the file. Once the file appears here, then choose Add to bring it over to here and submit it. And I will manually grade that document. I'm going to leave here because I don't need to submit. The last thing is Microsoft Digital Literacy. Give this a second to come up. Here's the assignment. There are five topics included. After you complete those, you can take the digital literacy test. There's 30 questions. You have one hour to do it. Good news is you can do it over and over until you get it right. If you forget to do this or you don't choose not to do it or you never can pass that test, you can take our regular concepts test that will open up, and I'll be emailing you the date that that opens. Uh, last semester, 87% of the students took this. Most of them passed it on the first try. But over half of them went through the material first. I'm going to show you the material. Great. They're working on a new version that has Windows 10 questions in it, but it's not ready yet. I can launch the e-learning and begin. Here's the other things. I don't want to do any of this. Definitely don't download it unless you just want it to keep forever. I can go to the e-learning and begin. It brings up the first module. There we go. Currently, I've since I'm on a different computer than I started on, it'll say nothing, but that's all right. I can go to the next one. All right, it brings it up. Your computer is not broken. There is no sound to this tutorial. Anytime there's a plus, you can click on it to read the information there. This is a scroll bar. When you're ready to go to the next one, you click the next, and it's taking a second there. Once I complete those, notice it kind of grays those out. I can scroll down. If you're feeling really good, you can go check your knowledge, these different knowledge check items. If you're feeling excellent, like, wow, you think you already are very comfortable with all this, you can go back out of it, and I'm going to leave that. And, you know, I'm feeling really good, so I'm going to go ahead and launch the exam. These times where it says takes two to three hours, I found it didn't take anywhere near that long to go through the topics. But if you're feeling really confident, by all means, go ahead. You've got nothing to lose. Start the assessment. Okay, it gives you the example here. You won't get the exact same questions in the exact same order if you take it more than one time. Down here is previous question, next question. Here's a list of all, and then I can choose to score the test. He is a teacher, he uses Excel. And yes, one of the items talks about what Excel does when you're actually looking at the training. Not in-depth Excel, just here's what it does. He wants to find the total score for each student. That sounds like something Excel could do. Which of the following options should he use to calculate? The total. We know one thing. Auto format, no. It's going to be auto sum. I'm going to choose next. If you don't know that question, you can skip to the next and come back later. You want to send an email message to two friends. Again, read the question through, but you don't want the second friend to see the email of the first. What would you do to ensure your two friends don't see each other's email addresses? CC, again, if you went through the tutorials, means carbon copy, duplicate in other words. Everybody sees everybody else on the list. Subject, that's where you'd put the title for this email. Two, that's where you put the original recipient. BCC, blind carbon copy. That means everyone gets a copy, but they don't see each other's email addresses. 
I'm happy with that. If at this point you finished all 30 questions, it says I'm on question 3 of 30, so I apparently have not. But I'm going to submit it and show you what happens. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Wow, you have 7%. Maybe I should finish the test or maybe I should go back and read. And it gives you some ideas here of the components of the first lesson. Maybe I should read. Uh, here's the one on security. Well, maybe I should read all of those. I can print the results to know what I need to go back and read. If I had passed, what would come up here would be the digital certificate. In that case, you'll do the start in the snipping tool. There's the snip. And you could, might come up on another window apparently. Oh, yeah. I have three monitors up. I could click and highlight the entire certificate that will have your name on it because it will ask you to put your name in and then just save that file. Mouse is going erratic. File, file and then save as. Make sure and save it where you can find it but, and then you'll submit that to me and I will count that as your concepts grade. Two reasons. One, I found that this includes all the major components that I really want you to learn in a more fun and less stressful environment where you can do it at home. Of your classmates, two of them have already turned this in the first day I put it out there. Pretty impressive. So once you've got, went through this training, took the certificate test, you did the SNP screen of it and saved it, what you would do, would come back here to this assignment, I think mine's underneath here, you would actually choose the file and submit it, voila. Your score won't appear in my T. Let me tell go in and see that you've submitted that. And then I score it and you've got a score. If you're wondering why mine has a score of zero here, I went ahead and submitted something, submitted something wrong so I could grade it as a zero. So you could see as a student what happens when you don't finish that. That's what happened to me. So for right now, read the things here, watch the two first videos, complete this quiz, send me a document, and take the digital literacy. Go through the training and then take the certification test at the end and then submit me a copy of your certificate. If you don't pass it out here, the test will appear on the day and I'm going to email out what day that will be, so no problem. And this is our conversation on computer concepts.